Welcome to our lectern line. If you thought that the last method was kind of a wild method to get to the right answer for the integral of the secant of x, well, this one is an even more convoluted way of getting there. So first what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this as the integral of 1 over the cosine of x dx. And then we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the cosine of x. Multiply this times the cosine of x divided by the cosine of x. And so this now becomes equal to the integral of the cosine of x in the numerator divided by the cosine square of x in the denominator times dx. And now we're going to write the cosine, of, the cosine square of x as 1 minus the sine square of x. So this is equal to the integral of the cosine of x divided by 1 minus the sine square of x dx. And now we're going to make a substitution. Now we're going to let the sine of x equal u. Let's see here. Let's try. Let's see what happens. So let the sine of x equal u. That means that du dx is equal to the derivative of this, which is the cosine of x, which means that du is equal to the cosine of x dx. And notice that cosine of x dx is the numerator. That becomes du. And then the denominator will get 1 minus u squared. All right. So this then continues over here. So this now becomes the integral of du in the numerator divided by 1 minus u squared in the denominator. We have the difference of squares, so we can use partial fraction technique to do that. So what we're going to look at is we can take 1 over 1 minus u squared and write it as a over 1 minus u plus b, oop, that's a terrible looking b here, b divided by 1 plus u. And now we have, what we have to do is find what a and b are equal to and now substitute that into this equation or this integral to be able to integrate this as two separate fractions. So here we can see that if we multiply both sides of this equation here by 1 minus u squared, this becomes 1 in the numerator. So we have 1 equals a times 1 plus u plus b times 1 minus u. And that means here that uh, 1 equals a plus b. And since there's no u on the left side, we can say that 0 is equal to a minus b, which is that a equals b. So they're equal to one another. And that means that 1 equals 2a, which means that a equals 1 half, which is equal to b. So this allows me now to substitute for a and b in the fraction. I can pull out a 1 half. So I can say that this integral now can be written as 1 half times the integral of a over 1 minus u, which now becomes 1 over 1 minus u plus 1 over 1 plus u times du. All right, now that's easy to integrate. So that becomes equal to 1 half times the natural log or negative the natural log. Yeah, negative the natural log of 1 minus u. And then plus the natural log of, and I'm really running out of room here, 1 plus u. There we go, my closing brackets. I still have a constant of integration, so I'll go ahead and remember that I'm, when I'm integrated, I keep getting constant of integrations. But now here I have a negative, and here I have a plus. If I reverse the order, then I have the natural log of 1 plus u minus the natural log of 1 minus u. So this now becomes equal to 1 half times the natural log of 1 plus u in the numerator divided by 1 minus u in the denominator. Okay, well, I have a u here, and I end up started with an x. So I have to work my way back, and I made this substitution that u is equal to the sine of x, so I can go ahead 
and substitute that now. So this becomes equal to 1 half times the natural log of 1 plus the sine of x divided by 1 minus the sine of x plus a constant of integration. Okay, I'm getting close. I could leave it like this, but there's probably something else we can do. The reason why we want to do that is if you remember in the previous video we had a different answer and I would like to get to the very same answer as before. If I remember right, I believe we ended up with one half times the natural log of the secant of x plus the tangent of x. So let's see if we can get the same answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Let's see what we get. So this becomes equal to one half times the natural log of 1 plus the sine of x in the numerator times 1 plus the sine of x divided by 1 minus the sine of x times 1 plus the sine of x plus constant integration. All right, so what that then does is in the numerator we get the following. We get 1 half times the natural log of 1 plus the sine of x squared divided by, in the denominator, we have 1 minus the sine squared of x. Plus a constant of integration. And of course, 1 minus the sine squared of x, that's actually equal to the cosine squared of x. 1 half times the natural log of, in the numerator, I end up with 1 plus the sine of x squared in the denominator end up with the cosine square of x. Now notice if I can simply take the square root of this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root and the square at the same time, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this two and write in the front, so this becomes two times one half or one times 1 times the natural log of the square root of this, which is 1 plus the sine of x divided by the, oh, and I can't forget my constant of integration, divided by the cosine of x. And the last thing I need to do now is divide the cosine of x into the numerator, because 1 over the cosine becomes a secant, and the sine over the cosine becomes a tangent. So this now becomes equal to the natural log of the secant of x plus the tangent of x, plus a constant of integration, which happens to be, I believe, the exact same answer that we got in the previous video when we used a different trick to integrate the secant of x. Now, this is a little bit more convoluted, but you can see we still got to the exact same answer. So what we did first was we wrote the secant as 1 over the cosine, multiplied the numerator and the denominator by the cosine to get this, then we wrote the cosine squared as 1 minus the sine squared. Then we made the substitution, u equals the sine of x. Then we could use the partial fractions to write it as two separate fractions. We could then integrate those, and then we had to work our way back, resubstitute for u what the sine of x, and then with some manipulation, get back to the same answer we got before. And that's how it's done.